So we're here in the kitchen tonight with Sultan Megji of Apostry. Hello. And uh, he is cooking a beef curry, and we're smelling it, and we're starting to talk about the industry and seeing what insights come out with a little bit of aroma of nice food and taste of nice wine. This, this recipe can trace its lineage all the way back to kind of northwestern India, then into western India, and then into East Africa, where my dad was born, and then kind of into the you know, Europe and the U.S. for me. And so the recipe I gave you is basically the base recipe that you know my grandmother would have made. Um, and that's kind of the recipe that's been handed down because we want to keep it consistent. I make a slightly different version of it. I make a slightly Tanzanian slash American version. Going down and finding like causal variants. Yeah. At Apostry. Yeah. You are. Yeah, we are. I mean, we're doing. You're drilling all the way down. Yeah, all the way down. But th that's that costs more than five hundred dollars. No, that's still under five hundred dollars. Doesn't that take a lot of data curation? Not as much as you think. They like Ingenuity's done. doing? They, Doesn't this take, you know, a Not really. I mean, a if long you look, time. You know, look at look at look at what gene cards it makes available for very modest numbers of dollars. And they have an XML interface over the internet you can access. But we're spending all this energy building all these algorithms and tools, and then people are still trying to insert themselves into the middle of these processes to try to show their own research value. And that's not what that's not where the scale is gonna come from. Scale is not never gonna come from the research side of the universe. Scale is gonna come from the commercial side of the universe. So what do you need? If I were to sequence every baby born, let's just say, mm -hmm. at a hospital, mm -hmm. what would you want to do right now? You'd want to do exome, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, snips, novels, long and short indels, copy number kind of into that space. You'd want to put some interpretive stuff on the back end to lead to birth defects. You know, you'd want to harvest all the autism stuff. You know, you'd want to, all the stuff where it's really important in the first six to 12 months to identify it, right? You'd look for, you know, uh, stuff that, you know, birth defects leading to things like inguinal hernias or, you know, all that kind of stuff, which I had, so I, that's how I know that one. Hmm. Um, and at the, at the end of that, you have a basic set of data and a basic set of interpretation relevant to a certain population. You know, very, very young. Well, then you come back two years later and do a deeper analysis for you know a different step, stepping set of things, and then you start getting into nutrition and all the other kind of crazy long-term stuff people want to do. But there's no reason why, for you know really modest amount of money, you can't do that and just have the data. And then as the interpretations mature over time, just keep doing the analysis over and over again. And if you want to you know get into epigenetics and some of this other stuff, you can turn around and do another sequence later on, and maybe do a whole or whatever. This is the onions, the garlic, the potatoes, the curry powder, tomatoes, kind of the, the first half of the recipe. And this is a basis for pretty much any kind of standard curry mm. that I make. So, so. Which is why you are doing six cities in three months, um, or two months, or whatever it was. So there are a couple of reasons. I mean, there's the, all the business stuff trying to scale our commercial operations, which is you know, the boring side of this, right? The, the more important side of it is to get in touch with the industry as it evolves, because it's such a rapidly changing universe that, you know, the, especially the move out of the research universe into clinical is, is such a massive shift right now. And keeping in touch with everything that's going on there is, is almost a full-time job in and of itself. And you need to, we need to be able to get in front of some of the really stupid decisions that people are making and make sure that they don't, you know, let those get out into the commercial space. Because there are some tremendously bad decisions that people are making. That, are just are highly avoidable, but you gotta actually explain to them, like using Amazon for this, uh -huh. which is just ridiculous. The, it's ridiculous people are having a problem using Amazon. No, it's ridiculous well, they are that using. they are using it. Oh. <laughs> um, because the, the reality of what Amazon is, is Amazon's entire EC2 infrastructure is really designed around building what business applications for web. It is not designed to be a supercomputer. It is not designed for high through technology systems. Mm -hmm. It is not secured in any way whatsoever. It's basically the most insecure place on the entire internet. I mean Amazon. Amazon the most insecure yeah, place on the absolutely. internet. There are there's a tremendous amount of demonstrated use of the Amazon infrastructure for botnets and spam and uh, kitty porn. I mean it's just it's incredible the amount of 
horrible stuff that goes on in the wild, wild west that is Amazon. And I will not trust that infrastructure until they take security seriously. And that means breaking it up into component parts, redesigning big pieces of its architecture. It's just a disaster. And then on top of it all, it's virtualized, which means that you're not going to get decent performance out of it. You're going to have huge I.O. problems, which they won't be able to fix until they redesign it. Um, the healthcare system is the perfect way to explain why evolution exists and intelligent design doesn't. Because it was not designed. What is the most natural function of the human body, besides simply existing and, and eating and kind of the normal body? Eating, body? Yeah. eliminating, right. okay. sex. Okay, and having children. Okay, having that, children. Is the, that, is yeah. the, that is why we exist, procreation. Why do we treat it like it's a medical condition? It's not. It's a normal part of life. Why do we treat it like you're sick? You're not go sick. Go to the hospital. Yeah, why do you go to the hospital? You're not sick. You're having a baby. It is a natural function of life. Uh -huh. Why do we treat it like it's a medical issue? So that's, I learned that from my mother and my grandmother. So you, you spill some salt, you gotta do that. No, it's a European thing, I think, originally. I don't know where it came from. Uh, the boss probably knows. I don't know. <laughs> Engineer is, is a rather overloaded word nowadays, right? Okay. There are a million different kinds of engineers. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with it, I just think it's confusing. So for me, I talk about applied sciences, uh, applied technology, um, in, in ways that are meaningful to the world around us. So that's when I have to talk about this, that's how I talk about it. So for example, um, I, I work with someone very closely, his name is Michael Groner, he's one of the founders of Baptistry, he's our chief architect, and he and I are, are very similar, you know, close to the same age, uh, similar background, similar work experience, and the big difference between the two of us, and we talk about it quite a bit, is that he's been very much what I'd call it internally focused inside of computer science. So figuring out how to build the internal tools that keep the world working, you know, keep that universe operating and advancing it. I've been the other side of it, I've been the outside face of it. So I've been focused entirely on the applied side. So that's why I've worked in financial services. That's why I've worked in high tech. That's why I've you know kind of done all these different things on the outside. To You're me, not writing much code. No, God no. You don't want me writing code. I'm pretty bad at it actually. <laughs> okay. I'm good at proof of concepts, but I'm not. So the, you're not you're the, the outreach for the applied sciences. Yeah. Kind of. I, that might be it. I don't know. I it's 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 a hard thing to describe. This is probably the most conversation I've ever put into it. You guys figure it out. You're way smarter <laughs> than I am on this one. We're going to figure it out. Okay. The thought process that got me so that I could take what Apistry is doing from a core technology perspective and turn it into a genetics platform is the exact same process I used 12 years ago, 11 years ago, when we built the first non-mainframe market systems. So this was market the, system. Yeah, market system. So it's you know the system. You mean for like the Nasdaq for like, yeah, market? For New York Stock Exchange. Uh -huh. So we built the first non-mainframe version of that, and so we built it on kind of what we would call standard, you know, Unix, Linux technologies today, and it was the first web-based trading platform. You want to list the three biggest challenges for a computer scientist today? I would argue that they are number one, enabling, in essence, biotech into healthcare at scale. So building it so that every single person in the world, regardless of their place in society, can have a full genetic scan, can fully understand how their body works, and can do it in a way that is insanely affordable. So to me, insanely affordable, today is under $1,000. In three years, it should be under $100. Um, you know, I think, and I think it should be built into your iPhone, or you, you know, buy a thing at the, at the pharmacy, you plug it into your iPhone, you spit on it, and you install the app, and you click go, and you know, an hour later, you get an email with the secured link to the nice little report and all that. That's project number one. And that's what we're working on right now. And I think we, we, we've handled all the computer science. The computer science is sorted. There's nothing there. There's some integration work. The real challenge is, and this is why I get on the sequencers, there is no little device you spit on. It's always a guy in a lab, and it's always a six-figure or seven-figure device. That's why I jump out all, all over the sequencers, because they're not seriously thinking about radically changing the world. So that's one project. Second project is, our entire financial system is not designed to be consumer relevant. It's, it's legacy, it's old fashioned, there's 700 different overlapping systems. We need to wipe that out completely and come up with an entirely new way of doing finance. And I think a lot of the pain that we see um, in the 
economy right now is because nobody really understands how it all fits together. And in a lot of cases, it's all just ad hoc in terms of how it all fits together. Um, I would argue that there is a way to, in two years and for a very modest amount of money, to set up a company that could replace all retail, retail banking and all retail loans to consumers with a single unified entity that would be more cost effective, that would be easier to manage, and would fit into the lifestyle of everyone in the world. So it'd be mobile. Are you aligning that with the way we do finance? Yeah. That's part of this number yeah. two. Yeah, that whole conversation is number two. And then number three is, and this is where I get a little, a little way out there, is we need to be off this planet. We need to be on multiple planets. Because a single asteroid could kill us all. And frankly, we need the cultural differentiation. We need the exploring to make our, our culture more vivid and more exciting. I agree. I've been watching this Western series on HBO, and I want Which to go one? join a Wild West somewhere. Which one? Deadwood. Oh, okay. Have you seen it? <laughs> oh, wait. I think I watched the first episode. No. <laughs> it's um, in this territory. Uh, this They call it the camp, mm -hmm. where there's no law yet, because they're working on a treaty with the local native peoples. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of outside any law. And there's certain advantages to that mm -hmm. for the, the wealthy and the powerful. Sure. Well, just imagine, let's just say, <clears throat> hypothetical, let's just say that we could figure out how to do something better than low Earth orbit. Because right now, all we care about low is Earth low, orbit. Low, Leo is what they call low Earth orbit. That's all we care about. The, the, the space station is, is low Earth orbit, although you could argue that probably. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is an amazingly visionary guy um, from the... Yeah, yeah he, he does a couple of really good speeches about this. If you ever, uh, uh, the Sagan Files or whatever it's called on Facebook, or the Sagan Stories or whatever. Oh, uh, yes. The, the quotes with all the music and the nice visuals and all that. One asteroid, one stupid set of political decisions by three or four people on this planet, one decent environmental crisis, one decent weather crisis could really cripple humanity. Mm. And first off, we're not planning for most of those. And so that would be massively impactful. Second, why put all your ba eggs in one basket? We can be on the moon. We can be on Mars. If we chose to be on Mars tomorrow, we would be on Mars. Let's get on Mars. Let's invent that technology. Let's invent that next generation of economy. Because frankly, look at the entire internet. Look at the entire boom of the 90s. You can trace almost every single technology there back to the space program. Almost everything comes out of the investment we did to need to go to space. Applied visionary. Mm. Visionary. I hate the visionary word. Oh. You do? I do. Why? I, I find it arrogant. Kind of narcissistic even. Why should you listen to me? I'm just a guy. Yeah. I mean, really. I'm a guy from the middle of a cornfield. Still needs holes. Mm. Mm. So many flavors. Yeah. They're hard to isolate. Uh, yeah, that pepper's got some kick to it. Mm. But absolutely delicious. Mm. For whatever reason, we're now afraid of failure. I, if I fail three times in one day, I think it's a good day. Because that's you know, not too bad. Mm -hmm. But I learned something.